Let's take this RAW file and turn it into this black and white image using only Lightroom Classic for the editing. As always, you can follow along by downloading the RAW file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's jump into it. So what we have here is a rather boring image with a overcast sky in the back and a strange looking tower in the center. By turning this shot into a black and white image, we can emphasize the lights and the shadows of this scene and make the subject stand out in a very pleasing way. So let's begin this process in the basic panel as always. And since we want to turn this into a black and white image, all we need to do is to click on that black and white button right here. Still, this doesn't look too good. So what I want to do first is to drop the exposure. I'm going to drop it quite a bit until the point where we are almost losing details in the very darkest parts of the image. So right around here, what this will do is it will make the shadows a lot deeper and we will also have more room to play around with the whites and the highlights of the image later on with targeted adjustments. For now, I'm also going to bring down the highlights. This will mostly affect the sky, but also some parts in the subject itself. Let's bring it down quite a bit like this. Now, looking at Instagram, you can see a little bit of clipping going on in the very darkest areas. Uh, let's see if we can prevent that by slightly raising the shadows. It's not completely gone, but we do have a little more details in the darkest parts of the image. Due to these changes, we are losing a little bit of contrast, but don't worry, we can change that by increasing the whites. And this will also bring back some more brightness to the image. So raising the white slider, we are getting more attention to the brighter areas of the subject. And in this case, this looks especially good because we have these sharp edges between the bright areas and these darker areas of that building. Of course, this is something we can further emphasize later on with a little bit more targeted masking adjustments. But for now, let's keep on working on the basic adjustments. Although this is a black and white image, we can still make use of the white balance settings and adjust the temperature to get a different effect. So if I bring up the temperature, you will see the sky is getting brighter. And I can make use of this effect to later kind of have an easier time selecting the tower or selecting the background. So I want to bring up the temperature quite a bit to nicely separate the tower from the sky. And I think right at this point is a perfect spot. Then I also want this image to look super sharp. So I am going to bring up the texture. I'm also going to introduce some clarity and we're going to bring up the dehaze. So not only will those adjustments make the image look sharper, but we also get back some more contrast. And that is the image after the basic adjustments. Let's compare to before real quick and instantly you can see the image is looking much more interesting because of that contrast rich effect we have added on top with the basic adjustments. But of course, as always, we can now use masking to really spice things up. So let's go ahead, open up the masking panel. And right away, I want to start working on the background. Since we have a really clear edge right here with the subject, I can simply click on select background right here. And you can see Lightroom will create a pretty much perfect mask for the background. Now, what I want to do for the back is to make it a lot darker, but I also want to keep some light coming in from the left side. And I'm going to do that by subtracting a radial gradient somewhere up in here. I think I need to make this radial gradient less soft. So let's bring down the feather. And I also think I want to make it bigger like this. Let's also stretch it further to the right side. And as you can see, I'm placing the center outside of the image to get a more natural light effect. Okay, so I think that's a good positioning for this radial gradient. Now what I'm going to do to make the background darker is simply drop the exposure. That's all there is to it. So let's bring it down. I'm going to drop it heavily like this. Instantly, this looks much better and more dramatic. I do think I need to change this radial gradient a little more. I'm going to bring back up the feather and I'm also going to make this radial gradient a lot bigger. All right, then let's keep on working on the background. I'm going to use a linear gradient and let's bring it down from the top like this. I want to make the top darker, but I don't want to affect this light effect, which we are going to create step by step now. So we only need the top part. Of course, we don't want to have the subject selected. So we need to click on that subject button. And here we are choosing select subject. 
This way we are getting rid of the subject from this linear gradient. And what we can do now is to again simply bring down the exposure. Again, I'm dropping it heavily. And this way we are making the sky look really, really dramatic. I'm also going to do the same thing on the bottom part. So let's use another linear gradient. I'm going to cover a, a bigger area this time. And again, we need to subtract the subject. So only the background is affected here. You can see that's a perfect selection. Now again, let's bring down the exposure. Again, I'm dropping it a lot. And what this will do as well is now we get this super sharp looking edge between the bright side of this building and the background, which just looks super, super satisfying. Plus, I also keep an eye on the edge on the right side. I still want this area to be visible right at this point. I think it's dark enough to make it dramatic, but we are not losing that edge between building and background. But now let's work on that light effect coming in from the left side. For that, I'm going to use a radial gradient. And let's target the area which we have subtracted earlier from that background mask, just like this. Again, I'm placing the center outside of the image for a more natural effect. And let's bring up the feather all the way. And again, we don't want to affect the subject yet. So I'm going to subtract the subject once more from this mask. All right, looking good. Now what I'm going to do is to simply bring up the exposure. I want to raise it a lot to create this really heavy light effect. Wonderful. We can not only raise exposure, but we can also raise the blacks, which works really nicely on that background because there are a lot of blacks involved. We can also bring up the whites if we want. Just be careful to not introduce any clipping in the highlights. So pay close attention to the histogram, but this is looking great. I want to make this light effect a little more convincing. So I'm going to use a second radial gradient and I'm going to make it slightly smaller. Again, I'm placing the center outside of the image. This time I'm making sure it's overlapping that building in the center just a little bit like this. And what I'm going to do now is to bring up the blacks and what this will do is it will create a very soft glow effect on the left side of the building. So it kind of looks like the light is shining more on this part of this tower. Let's bring up the blacks quite a bit more. And if you want, we could make this glow effect stronger by bringing down the dehaze right here. Let's bring it down a lot to make this glow effect a bit more visible. Wonderful. Now I think we need to adjust the positioning a little bit so it's not overlapping as much. But I think like this is perfect. At this point, I also want to further emphasize the lights of the tower itself. So I am going to create a color range mask. And with that color range mask, let's try, I'm going to click right in here in that bright part. This is looking like a very good selection. Still, I want to modify it. I want to make sure it's only selecting the subject. So I'm going to click on those three dots, go to intersect mask with and choose select subject. This way we are making sure nothing of the background will be targeted with this mask. And then I'm going to dodge these highlights by simply bringing up the exposure. All right, this is looking great. At this point, I think we could make the background a little bit softer. Therefore, let's use another background mask. This time I'm not going to modify it. Let's keep it simple like this. And what I'm going to do here is to bring down the clarity all the way. And finally, one more thing I want to do, let's create a subject mask. And with this mask, I want to do two things. I want to bring up the texture, making the subject even sharper. Then I also want to make these white lines in the shadows of that tower a little more visible. And what we can do for that is to use clarity, which works great for this purpose. So let's bring up the clarity. And as I bring it up, you can see those fine white lines becoming way more visible. Of course, I don't want to overdo it with the clarity, so I'm just going to bring it down a notch. I think right around here looks good enough. Perfect. And that's the image after the masking adjustments. Let me turn off all the masks so we can get a better idea what the transformation looks like. This was the image after the basic adjustments, and here we have the masks added on top. You can see that's a huge difference. And it's completely done in Lightroom. No Photoshop is needed right here. Although it might seem strange, but we can do a little bit of color grading. And I am going to do that in the color grading panel. 
because I want to add some split toning. I'm going to use the shadows by clicking right in here. And on these shadows, I want to apply a very, very subtle blue color tone. So let's set up the hue. I'm going with a cold tone right around here. And I'm going to slightly bump up the saturation to have a hint of blue in here. It's almost not noticeable, but this kind of gives the image more of a silver-like black and white effect. I think it looks great, but of course that comes down to your personal preferences. So that's pretty much the image after the Lightroom adjustments. So all we need to do now, let's do some sharpening in the details tab. As always, I'm going to bring down the radius. Let's increase the details. Let's also add masking while holding down the Alt key. Very important for this image. So like, just like this, we can nicely target the lines of the building. And I'm going to bring up the amount of sharpening. And we are done. All right, and that's it for creating this black and white image using only Lightroom Classic for the editing. Let me know what you think about this. If you want to add anything or if you have any questions left, let me know in the comments as well. And thank you so much for watching this video.